Good morning. Great to see you today on this beautiful summer day. Good to have you worshiping with us uh, this week. We've had uh, some of our groups going in different directions. Our youth group had a wonderful bowling time yesterday, and so they were out and about. And we also have some of our, the members of our UMW, our United Methodist Women's Group, a few of them are down at a retreat uh, this weekend, and so we, our prayers are with them as well, and uh, in, this, in this very much the middle of summer right now. You know, when we get to the middle of summer, we often think about uh, vacation time, and uh, today's, uh, today's theme is really going to talk about uh, the balance in our lives, the, the idea that... Um, that yes, we go, 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 but we also need that time of rest as well. And that there's kind of a back and forth. And sometimes for many of us, uh, for many of you, uh, maybe there's not a formal vacation, an actual vacation. And so how do we find that place of rest in the midst of it all? That's our theme as we come together to worship today. It's great to see you here. We like to say whoever you are and wherever you are in your journey of faith, you are welcome here. So welcome. Glad to have you with us for worship. We're going to stand right now so we can be together for our opening hymn. Let's stand and sing together.
Thank you, music team, for that beautiful warm-up. Good morning. I'm Bruce Ross, your worship leader for uh, the service this morning. Uh, thank you so much for worshiping with us. It's wonderful to see all of your faces. Uh, and if you're joining us in the streaming service or online, uh, we know you're there and we can see you smiling, so hi. Um, uh, as we do each week, I want to take just a moment to highlight some information. Uh, first of all, if you haven't already, please look down to the end of the pew uh, for the white binders. Uh, it's great if you could register your attendance and make yourself a name tag so we can greet ourselves by name. Um, very helpful to the church to have attendance as well. Uh, as you exit through the doors in the back, uh, restrooms there to your left, down the hall and on the left. Um, could, could get important, never know. Uh, you should have received one of those great little communion cups on your way in. If you did not, or if you need a gluten-free one, raise your hand and one of our greeters will uh, get it to you. Uh, there'll be instructions later during communion for uh, how they work. Um, this church, our church, depends on the gifts and pledges and tithes of all of us. Your monetary offerings have been a real blessing throughout the time of the pandemic. Uh, for those here in person, uh, there's an offering box uh, out in the back. Uh, Beth Brower will be there uh, after the service. Contributions can be made there following our service today. Uh, and if you're joining us on the live stream or uh, film worship video, uh, you can send gifts here to our church address or go through the link on our website. Uh, it's right there on the worship page if you're online uh, to make an electronic donation. So uh, thank you again for the ways you have come together in continued support of our church. And Pastor Joe has an item to highlight. Well, as I said earlier, a few minutes ago, that, uh, that we, have, uh, we have four members of our UMW group who are at a conference UMW retreat this weekend. Carol Whitmer, Connie Lancaster, Janice Gabriel, and Paula Smith are in Auburn this weekend. Our prayers are with them as they bring back spiritual renewal and learnings for our United Methodist Women's group here. Uh, this past week, I have been in contact with pastors from... First Christian Church and St. James Lutheran Church, and on Monday, July 26, so not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow, we're going to hold an evening service of remembrance on the anniversary of the car fire. Uh, the service is going to be held at First Christian Church, which is uh, there at the top of Placer, at, uh, Placer at Buenaventura, actually. And uh, we're inviting members of the public and all three congregations to be a part of this service. That'll be Monday, July 26, which July 26 is pretty well uh, remembered as the actual anniversary of that fire. I'm not sure if it started a day earlier than that or, or, or a, a couple days earlier than that. But uh, Monday, July 26 at 6.30 p.m., we hope you can join us, a service of remembrance um, of the car fire now three years ago. So, well, I'm going to invite our children to come forward right now for their special time. Kids, got kids here? I need kids. Come on down. Got to have helpers today, it's pretty important. Okay. Well, I got two, and that's pretty important, okay? So here's what we're going to do. Oh, yay, come on down. Have a seat. Okay, Emma, I want you over here. That's good. So you get a plate, okay? Nope, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. Eric, okay, now. Do you guys know what do you guys know what a balance is? Like a balance? Like when you're balancing, ah. It's sort of like that, but there's an actual thing and I don't have it, so we're going to make our own, okay? And it's a it's called a balance and it sometimes it sometimes it sits on a pole like this. And everything's just like this, and it's perfectly balanced. And sometimes it hangs from a string, and both sides are perfectly balanced. And sometimes each side has a plate, right? So, Eric, 
Well, because it's just two, okay? So you'll get the idea, though. You can come, you can come help by sitting right here, okay? Sit right here. Now, now look at them, okay? Now, Eric and Emma, kind of hold your plates up a little bit. Okay, now, if I put this, what is this? C-clamp, okay? If I put this C-clamp on here, Kind of heavy, right? So you ha your side has to go down a little bit, okay? You're down. Now, are we balanced right now? No, we're not balanced because Eric's side is heavier, so his plate's down farther. Now, what am I putting? C-clamp. Let's put another one on here. Now, now Emma's goes down a little bit. Okay, now we're perfectly balanced. Get it? Do you see what balanced is? They're just lined up because they both have the same amount of weight. Okay? Now, now bring your hands up a little bit more. Up, up, up. There you go. Good. Now, let's say, let's say, think about stuff that we like to do. Like, we like to stay awake, right? We like to stay up all night if we can, right? So, staying awake is something. So, let's put... Staying awake on this side goes down, right? Now, are we in balance right now? No. So what do we have to do over here? We put some sleep over here. Now, now we're balanced again, right? Now bring, your, bring, the, bring the plates up a little bit, okay? Now let's say, let's say we like to... Um, Watch TV. You like watch, t watch TV? Okay. And stay up late? Okay, well, <laughs> let's say we're going to watch TV all the time. Okay, we're going to watch TV all the time. That one goes down. Are we in balance if we watch TV all the time? No, we have to do something else. We have to, sometimes we have to do our homework, right? So now that goes down. Now we're more in balance, okay? Can't watch TV all the time. Can't do homework all the time. Can't stay awake all the time. Can't sleep all the time, right? Okay, I had some quarters in here. Okay, now. Okay. Because everything, remember, everything on one side has to match the other side, okay? Bring your plates up a little bit. Okay, now. If we're... Um, if we love to play, we might want to play all the time, right? So let's say this quarter is playing. Down. Okay. Now we're playing all the time. Is that possible? Is that a good balance in our life to play all the time? No. We have to do some work too. There. Now we're in balance again. Now our work and our play is in balance, our sleep and our waking is in balance, and our TV and our homework is in balance, right? That's pretty important, okay? So what's, what's the point? Well, the point is that God wants us to have balance in our lives, okay? We have to have a little bit of everything. We can't do all one or all the other, but God wants us to have, wants our lives to be balanced, so every time you get to a point where you think you're doing one thing way too much, maybe look at the other side to bring your life back into balance. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's have a prayer. And we'll keep our plates balanced by putting them right here. Okay? So let's have a prayer together. Dear God, we thank you for our lives and all the great things that you give for us to do. We thank you for sleep, but we also thank you that we can be awake. We thank you for playtime, but we also know that we have to spend some time doing work and chores and things like that. We thank you that we can watch TV, but we also know we have to, to do our homework as well. So help us always to try to keep our lives in balance. Watch over us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for coming up, you guys. You didn't...
Did you not stay in balance? I, I think you could stay in balance. Okay, so you guys get to go back to Miss Christine is in the back. Where are you, Christine? Maybe she can't hear us. Let's make sure that... And there's Sarah. Okay, they're heading in the right direction. See you guys later. Okay, our music team's ready. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat for a minute before we start today. Let me move these guys over here. Got a lot going on today. You know, we're going to do, uh, it's kind of a neat thing our singers are going to share with you today. They're going to do a hymn that was written in 1879 by a guy named Josiah Kelly Allwood. And Josiah Allwood just happens to be Sandy Fecker's great-great-grandfather. And, and basically, this was a pretty well-known hymn in the Evangelical United Brethren Church, which is a church Sandy grew up in, and it was the predecessor before our United Methodist Church. The, the Methodist Church and the Evangelical United Brethren joined together to form the United Methodist Church. So it was a, it was a Wesleyan church that, that merged with our church uh, about 50 years ago. Well, Sandy brought this hymn to our attention because she was hoping it could be played today, July 18th, because this is the first birthday of her twin granddaughters, Elowen and Isabel Edwards, and this celebrates their birthday and also honors twin brothers, Ethan and Ian. So the story goes that Josiah returned to his home in Michigan late one August night. It was about one in the morning, and he looked up and he saw a rainbow against a dense black cloud. He saw a rainbow at one o'clock in the morning, and it gave him great comfort. Anyway, the rest of the entire sky was completely clear. Not a cloud in the sky except this rainbow with a cloud behind it. So he called this tune, The Unclouded Day. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the sky. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where the storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of a
Amen. I like those, I like, I like those Western hymns. <laughs> our, our reading today, our scripture today is from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Bruce. Years ago, I remember uh, Julia and I took a, a bike ride. Uh, it was a group bike ride uh, that was, you know, pre-planned and all of this. And we were with 30 or 40 other people. And it was uh, in that single day, we were going to go 60 or 70 miles. So it was a pretty long day of riding a bike, and I remember the 30 or 40 of us got kind of spread out, and I was near the end, and Julia was up, Julia was up in front of me, and there were maybe only a few people behind me, and I got a flat tire, and so I kind of pulled over, and I, I could see Julia way up there, and I, I said, I've got a flat tire, and I'm yelling, but, and th this is probably before, you know, we're all carrying our cell phones or whatever, but anyway, um, a few of the people that passed me said they would tell her that I had a flat tire, but I didn't really see her again for a long time, so I <laughs> went ahead and flipped the bike over and pulled the wheel off, and I was ready if I got a flat tire, I knew what to do, and but it, took, it takes a while, and it took me a while to change the tire. And uh, when I finally got going again, I'd probably lost at least 20 minutes, maybe more. And uh, you know how, how the group's going along, and there's a planned break. You know, there's a planned break where everyone's going to stop and eat lunch. And uh, I'm riding along, riding along, and... I can still remember finally getting to the place. For, first of all, Julia did wait for me, so I um, actually came across Julia before I got there. But we rode the rest of the way to that break point, and pretty much everyone had already eaten lunch and moved on by the time we arrived. And so we sort of felt like if we were going to catch up, we had to kind of stuff the food down real quick and keep going, you know. Sometimes our lives get a little bit like that. You know, we focus completely on the task at hand. It might be school, it might be work, it might be getting the car fixed, staying on top of emails, details of our job, keeping the house running, the lawn mowed, the bills paid. So much so that many of us feel before we even get to that moment of rest, we have to resume, we have to continue, we have to keep on continuing or we will fall behind. If you also feel that you can never catch up, a recent article in a firefighting magazine talked about what firefighters are going through right now. It said wildland firefighters usually work eight-hour shifts except when they don't, which is often. While on fires, their shift schedules and sleep routines are often disrupted. The eight-hour shift can be extended to 12 and then 16 hours. And the first shift on a fire may be longer than 16 hours. And a crew that is used to working during the day can suddenly be placed on a night shift. A firefighter sleep study conducted by Missoula, Montana Technology Development Center 
found that sleep deprivation contributed to fatigue and stress and performance amongst firefighters. The author of the article talked about talked with pilots and other personnel who were traveling a great distance with an air tanker to a new assignment that they had to fly across three time zones. And they started work hours earlier than they normally would have. After a couple of days at the new site, crew members told him that they were really tired even though they were not physically handling things beyond their normal duties. The supervisor understood the dangers of sleep deprivation and made sure those firefighters got a day off. You know, I think the disciples needed a day off. The disciples needed some downtime. At least that's what it sounds like to me as I read our passage for today. Those who followed Jesus worked hard. You know, interestingly, they are called apostles in this passage that Bruce shared with us. This is the only time in Mark's entire gospel that Mark refers to them as the apostles. An apostle is one who is sent out. They had been sent out by Jesus as messengers, as emissaries, as ambassadors. They had been with people, teaching people, interacting with people, trying to care for people. And it was draining them. And Jesus recognized this. He knew they had a need for renewal. So he says to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. Unfortunately, as the passage tells us, as soon as they reached the so-called deserted place, all the people had gone around there ahead of them, and the disciples, they, they came ashore, and all the people were waiting for them. So the disciples didn't really find the peace that they were looking for. Jesus' words to his disciples point to the struggles of being human, the weariness, the turmoil, the daily grind. We're like bicyclists who have to keep riding, keep on riding, or we'll never stay up with the the pack, right? Jesus' words can easily speak to people today, those of you who work so hard and yet feel like you're still the last one in line. His words seem to be meant for those who get to their place of rest and then discover that it's not there anymore, right? Can we find a place in this world Whereas Jesus says we can rest a while. You know, a couple of weeks ago, our 6 p.m. musicians, the music team, they were doing one of the spirituals at the 6 p.m. service. And they were kind of giving this, this spiritual their own feel. Might have been, you know, down to the river to pray or something like that. And I, I started thinking about the singing of those spirituals and how... Many of those songs express the longing of slaves to be free from the the anguish and the turmoil of their lives. They endured so much pain, they had endured so much daily hardship that their desire was to reach heavenly glory and to leave this world behind. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home, right? Just a little while to stay here. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away, right? You, many of you know the words to some of these old spirituals. In an article that was published just a few years ago by Pamela Crosby, she writes about how these songs developed. She says, African-American spirituals emerged from a mix of the, the brutal institution of slavery Christian influences, and African culture. The songs expressed a yearning for a better life, and it claimed identification with the children of Israel, and named, they named the slave owners deceit and hypocrisy. They underscored the need for a closer walk with God. They identified the reality of evil, and they emphasized the slave's hope for freedom for the future. Love, grace, mercy, judgment, death, and eternal life are among the themes that are enfolded in these songs. You know, when Jesus asks his followers to come to a deserted place and rest a while, the Greek word used for rest in our passage literally means to be exempt. 
to, to take an intermission. To, and it seems to me that those, those who sang the first spirituals desired that place of rest. They sought to be free from the brutality of what, that they knew in this world. Jesus is telling his disciples, and to some extent all of us, that we can find an exemption from that daily grind. Renewal of our souls in a larger perspective than simply our day-to-day struggles. But how and where? Some of you have heard me tell the story of Nicholas Herman. Nicholas lived in France in the 1600s. At the age of 18, Nicholas experienced a radical change of mind and heart when he saw a lonely tree in the middle of winter standing bare, barren, leafless against the snow. As he thought about that tree and he, he thought about, just kind of focused everything he had on that tree and anticipated that same tree burgeoning with new life the following spring, Nicholas was overwhelmed by a big picture view of the providence and power of God, which never left him and kindled in him an intense love for God. After serving in the military and then later as a valet, this same young man, Nicholas Herman, entered a monastery in Paris. Young Nicholas would later become Brother Lawrence, a humble lay servant who worked in the kitchen and repaired shoes at the monastery for some 25 years. While at the monastery, Brother Lawrence realized that everything he did could be done with the love of God in his heart. Brother Lawrence is unlike other spiritual teachers who insist on withdrawing from the world, pulling away from the world for contemplative prayer. He instead focuses on the time, the time of business as the primary opportunity to know the presence of God. It is, after all, the largest part of one's day. Brother Lawrence once wrote this. He said, we give ourselves a world of trouble and pursue a multitude of practices to attain a sense of the presence of God. And yet, how much easier to do our common business purely for the love of God, to set his consecrating mark on everything we do, thereby foster a sense of his abiding presence by communion of our heart with him. You know, William Barclay, the famous Bible scholar, he looked at our passage for today and said, it may well be that the whole trouble with our lives is that we give God no opportunity to speak to us because we do not know how to be still and how to listen. We give God no time to recharge us with spiritual energy and strength because there's no time when we truly open ourselves, wait upon him. And then Barclay says this, which really gets to the heart of the matter. Barclay says, The rhythm of the Christian life is an alternate meeting with God in the secret place and serving others in the marketplace. The rhythm of the Christian life is an alternate meeting with God in the secret place and serving others in the marketplace. It's kind of saying we kind of go back and forth. That's the balance. It's the balance that I was talking about with the children. One of the things I think we get into is compartmentalization. We think that, you know, work goes over here, school goes over here, fun activities are over here, church is over here. Church isn't part of the fun activities, right? And uh, we get the same kind of thinking when it comes to rest. We think that we got to drop everything and get away for a week or two or no rest can possibly be found. But what about those who don't have any vacation time? What about those of you who are caring for a spouse who is ill? What about those of you who care for an elderly parent? What about parents of young children or babies? Do they ever really get time off? Not really. I mean, it's really a constant, constant thing. And so the rest, and indeed our connection to God, comes not in a drop everything else kind of a way. The rest must come in the middle of everything else. Looking at the teachings of Jesus, it's clear that we're supposed to be in this world, going about our daily tasks, working at a job, caring for children, you know, listening to friends, helping the homeless, celebrating weddings or birthdays, singing together in church, doing the things that matter day by day. Those things are good. 
What Brother Lawrence and others realize is that the intermission, the exemption, the connection to God comes in the middle of all of those things. That there's a bigger reality there. I remember one time trying to explain this and, and I used the image of going to a movie. And you know, when you go into a movie theater, especially nowadays when they've got you know, surround sound and Dolby and every kind of different system in the movie theaters and you can hear a, a stampede of animals and it sounds like it's starting over here and kind of moving across the theater this way, right? You get into the middle of the movie and you're just completely immersed and you think that that's all there is and then suddenly the, the movie ends, right? And the, the lights come up in the theater a little bit and you kind of come out of it, right? You kind of, oh, oh yeah, oh, I'm back here I am in Redding, California, and I'm in a movie theater. And, and then you walk out into the heat, and it's like, oh, it's, it's stifling, right? But the point is, <laughs> the point is that in, when you're in the movie, you think that that's all there is to the world. You think that that's the whole world. But then when the movie ends, you realize that the world is much bigger and it's much grander and there's a whole nother world and a whole nother life out there. And so the point I'm trying to make is, is sort of like we live our lives like we're in the movie. The, 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 our normal living of our lives is kind of like we're in the movie when we don't realize that there's a much bigger, grander uh, reality and existence out there which is our relationship with God and our connection to God. You know, when African slaves sang spirituals like There is a Balm in Gilead, for example, they recognized the truth of God's presence. They recognized that larger picture. There is a Balm in Gilead came directly from the Old Testament. As he grieved over the Israelites who had turned their backs on God, the prophet Jeremiah, he poses the question in the book of Jeremiah, is there no Balm in Gilead? Enslaved Africans found the answer in Christ. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Don't ever feel discouraged, for Jesus is your friend. If you lack for knowledge, he'll ne'er refuse to lend. Pamela Crosby, the, the author that wrote that article I mentioned, said, just as this text, the text of this soothing spiritual captures a timeless message, the strength and power of African-American spirituals speaks to the continued relevance of these songs and the reason they still heal souls today. In other words, Christ for them became the one who can make the wounded whole. Christ is the healing balm who is with us each and every moment. Like the disciples in our story, in our passage today, we can't always find a deserted place. But that doesn't mean we can't find that still point, that place of rest, place of quiet trust. The, the quiet center, you're going to hear a song, come and find the quiet center, right? That place of exemption, which is precisely what Brother Lawrence did. He sought to do everything for the love of God. As we go forth today, let's remember that we don't have to go to the far reaches of the earth to find a place to rest a while. In fact, we don't even have to stop our daily lives or activities. Let's remember that like people like Brother Lawrence, who teach us that, that we can find God or become aware of God even as we continue our work, even as we continue our activity in this world. In doing so, our souls find a place to rest. Our souls find that still point. Our souls are made aware that this daily grind is not all there is. There are glimpses of a larger perspective, which are moments of rest in God. Would you pray with me right now? Let's pray together. Holy God, our lives are built around many important responsibilities and relationships. But before and beyond all of them, there was and is you. Help us to know that you are always present that we can approach you even in the midst of our daily tasks and obligations. We can seek to love you with heart, soul, mind, and strength, even as we go about our work in this world. For we know, Lord, that when we place you first, when we find that place of quiet trust, 
the other parts of our lives will assume their proper place. We ask this in the name of the one who was always mindful of you, the one who provides us true rest for our souls, your son Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite our music team, our musicians to come forward at this time as we move into, um, prepare to move into our, our time of prayer. I ask them to share uh, this musical offering with us as well.
Thank you, music team, for that beautiful offering. We are going to move into our time of prayer right now, and as we do, I want to call your attention to some folks that we are continuing to hold in prayer. Roy Player is, uh, continues to recover from a stroke that he had a little while back. Roy is home now um, as of about a week ago, um, just over a week, and uh, just want to keep Roy, Annalilia, Ari, the entire player family in our prayers as he does, uh, he works on rehab and, and trying to get better. We also continue to hold uh, Jeanette Doty in our prayers following the recent loss of her husband, Jim, Jim Doty. Uh, we're also holding uh, Marge Reed and Shirley Davis in our prayers as they uh, continue their struggle with cancer. Uh, and there are a number of others that we are holding in prayers as well. Uh, we remember our UMW ladies down in, in Auburn this weekend. And, uh, and then, of course, all the prayers that, that many of you bring today, the prayers that are upon, uh, upon your hearts. Let's bring those hearts, let's bring our hearts together right now as we come together in a time of prayer. Let's pray. Loving God, we are so grateful for your spirit and the love we experience when we're able to gather together. We come this day from different situations and circumstances. Each person here brings their prayers to you. Some here are tired, some are joyful, some are celebrating, some may be filled with stress or worry or concern. Speak to each one here. Renew our hearts, revitalize us with the warmth that only you can bring. Forgive us and restore us with your healing strength. Lord, many of us stay so busy that it is difficult to find that place of rest. You would have us watch and listen for your presence, indeed to seek it out. As we do so, remind us that we grow the most when we take some emotional and spiritual risk. Remind us that we are more fully the human beings you would have us be when we share your love and your compassion with others. Lord, some in this community have been traveling. We welcome them back. Others are still away, and we ask that you would guide and uphold them in their travels. We pray for strength and safety for so many firefighters in unbearable heat, those who are out on the front lines fighting fires in numerous locations today. Loving God, during our communion time, Help each of us to open ourselves to your guidance. And as we come to your table this morning, may we experience your strength, your forgiveness, and your healing presence. Help us to watch and listen as we share together now the prayer that your beloved son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you. That's Sarah Harris, Gwen Rooker, and Robert Waterbury. Thank you so much. We are so grateful to be able to come once again to the table today. Whenever we, whenever we gather as a church community, a church family, we are much like a group of disciples that sat with Jesus at table on the night that he was betrayed. It was on that night as Jesus shared the Passover meal with his disciples, he took the bread of that meal, the bread and the juice of that meal, and he gave them brand new meanings. First, after giving God thanks and praise, he broke the bread and gave it to them saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving God thanks and praise, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, each of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of this, remember me. And so we who are gathered here today, we do remember. We remember in a way that brings the very presence of the risen Christ back into our midst. Just as we share this one cup, we are reminded that we are one body in Christ. Whether we are here, whether we are at 6 p.m. service, whether we're on the live stream, whether we're on the filmed version of the video, God connects us across time and space. And just as we share bread that has been broken, we are reminded once again in each and every week that, that each one of us comes before God broken in some way in need of God's love, in need of God's forgiveness, in need of God's hope, in need of God's healing touch. And so we come to the table uh, in that spirit. As you entered today, especially if you, if you have not been with us since we've been back in the sanctuary, you would have received one of these little cups. And... Uh, would invite you to, to turn it in such a way that the bread, the bread side is on top, peel that, peel that little top back and take the piece of bread and then flip it back over. And then when you're ready, you can peel back the top for the juice and you can receive the elements together in that fashion. And so my friends, let us share this holy sacrament together. My friends, the bread, the, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shared with you. Receive now these holy gifts in great thanksgiving.
Let's pray together. Holy God, we thank you for this sacrament in which you reveal your presence and your power to us. As we go forth into our lives this week, help us to remember to seek you out, to seek that sense of balance, to know that, that, we, de- that we do need to find those moments of rest in you. May we know as we go forth from this place, may we know that you nudge us, you guide us, you speak to us uh, each and every day. Help us to be open and attentive to that guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's great to see you here. Great to have you in worship with us. I'm going to invite you to to join us down below in the social hall. There is a place there, a table at one end, which has uh, some refreshments, and we would invite you to come down and and share that time of refreshments uh, with us just immediately following the service today. I'm going to invite you to stand so we can be together for our benediction, our sending forth. My friends, go now in peace, love God, and serve the people. And may our God, the God who walks with us daily, the God who who prompts us to seek him out, may that God go with you now and through this coming week. Go in his peace, go in his presence, and go in God's grace. Amen.